Nestled within the mountains of ancient Japan, Yoshimitsu was born to the Manji clan. The village elders, whose faces were marked with wisdom and anticipation, gathered to welcome the newborn, whom they believed destined to lead their clan to greatness. As the child's cries echoed through the village, the elders whispered prayers and their voices carried on the breeze that rustled the emerald leaves. Raised in the heart of the clan's traditions, Yoshimitsu was steeped in the art of ninjutsu and the uncompromising moral code from his earliest days. Guided by the village's most skilled warriors and wisest sages, he was taught to master stealth, swordsmanship, and mental discipline. The elders recognized a unique spark of potential in him, nurturing his abilities and instilling the core values of honor, self-sacrifice, and a commitment to protect the weak and innocent. Throughout his childhood, he underwent rigorous training, but also learned about the deeper ethos of the Manji clan. These lessons, woven into his upbringing, prepared him to carry the mantle of leadership. As he grew, his reputation as a skilled warrior and principled young man solidified his legendary status within the village. The elders watched with pride as he matured, confident that he was the leader they had foreseen ready to guide the clan through future challenges. As dawn broke over the misty peaks, he stepped out from his dwelling into the bustling village, heading to the training grounds. There, his mentor, Takeshimitsu, a seasoned warrior steeped in the clan's secrets, awaited. Takeshimitsu began to explain amidst intricate sword katas. He nodded. His determination was clear. His journey to becoming the legendary Yoshimitsu began to unfold. Yoshimitsu Takeshimitsu began to recount the clan's history, emphasizing their oath to protect the innocent and fight injustice, instilling that the clan's creed was a sacred duty. Yoshimitsu absorbed every word, his motions fluid with the kata, internalizing the lessons of justice and resolve. As training ended, Takashimitsu offered a final piece of wisdom. Yoshimitsu left the grounds inspired, understanding that the creed was not just ideals, but a guiding force for his actions. Ready to face any challenge, he was growing daily into the leader his clan anticipated. As Yoshimitsu's training neared completion, rumors swirled about a legendary cursed blade hidden in the clan's vault a powerful artifact tied to the Manji clan's history. One evening, around a village bonfire, the chief elder, Isao Mitsu, called Yoshimitsu to him. He absorbed the weight of Izao Mitsu's words, understanding the blade's power and peril. Izao Mitsu then announced that the elders had chosen Yoshimitsu to inherit the blade and lead the clan. Overwhelmed yet resolute, he accepted, vowing to use the blade for good. In a moonlit ceremony, he received the cursed blade. Grasping the hilt, he felt a surge of energy, powerful but daunting. As the elders bowed, acknowledging their new leader, Yoshimitsu stood firm, 
ready to guide the Manji clan towards a future of justice and prosperity. The gleaming blade at his side, a symbol of both his leadership and the immense responsibilities it entailed. Yoshimitsu, now the Manji clan's leader, stood ready with the cursed blade at his side. Having quickly adapted to leadership, he directed the clan's engagement in the wider world, targeting corrupt daimyo and greedy merchants through stealthy raids that redistributed wealth to the oppressed. These actions built the clan's reputation as shadowy justice bringers. As new technologies and ideas began to reshape society, Yoshimitsu recognized the need for the Manji clan to evolve. He sought allies and encouraged his warriors to embrace modern tools alongside traditional ninjutsu, ensuring their skills remained formidable and relevant. Shisokuzeku. In the bustling town below the Manji clan mountains, homeless and scared, a young girl named Kunimitsu survived by stealing from passers-by. Her sight was slowly fading, but she used her agility, wits, and perception to navigate the harsh world alone. One night, drawn by a commotion, she witnessed the well-known Yoshimitsu rescue an elderly merchant from thugs. Mesmerized by his skill and the legendary cursed blade, Kunimitsu's life changed instantly. She began secretly following Yoshimitsu, observing his missions of justice and mercy. Inspired by his compassion and adherence to his clan's creed, she eventually approached him, expressing a bold desire to join his clan and learn his ways. Her fading eyes were filled with a desperate hunger for strength and purpose. Though she kept her past hidden, scars on her face hinted at the abuses she had suffered while surviving on the streets. Yoshimitsu recognized a desperate spirit in her resilience and offered a warning of the path's demands. Sacrifice, dedication, and a steadfast commitment to justice. Kunimitsu accepted without hesitation, her resolve igniting. With that, Kunimitsu stepped into a new chapter of her life rising from a shadowy existence to become an integral member of the Manji clan, dedicated to their quest for justice in a troubled world. As the sun rose over the Manji clan's hidden village, Kunimitsu, now fully immersed in her training, felt a newfound sense of belonging. Under Yoshimitsu's mentorship, she rapidly mastered Manji Ninjutsu, blending traditional combat and stealth with the clan's ethos of justice and self-sacrifice. Her dedication impressed even the seasoned warriors, affirming her place within this new family. Over time, Kunimitsu undertook challenging missions, proving her worth and deepening bonds within the clan. Yoshimitsu watched her growth with pride, yet knew the future held tests that would challenge her loyalty and resolve. But for now, he was reassured by her commitment, confident that together, they would uphold justice and honor. As the seasons passed, Yoshimitsu and Kunimitsu frequently partnered on missions. Their skills in sync, they were quite the team. During quieter moments, Yoshimitsu imparted the Manji clan's deeper philosophies and rich history to Kunimitsu, who absorbed every lesson with keen interest, growing increasingly drawn to his wisdom. As they sat under the starlit sky, Kunimitsu experienced a profound contentment, having found her place and mentor in Yoshimitsu. Yet, a part of her still battled with darker impulses, her old self's desires lurking within. She resolved to commit fully to her new path, unaware that these very desires would one day threaten her relationship with Yoshimitsu and the stability of the Manji clan. In the dark heart of the Manji clan's compound, Kunimitsu was caught thieving from her own people. For months, she had been secretly siphoning artifacts and treasures from the clan's vaults, 
Her once unshakable loyalty eroded by the whispers of greed and ambition that had taken root in her heart. Just as she neared the exit, Yoshimitsu confronted her, sorrow and disappointment in his eyes. Gashin Shotan! Gravely wounded by the betrayal, Yoshimitsu asked her why she would do this. Gripping the stolen artifacts, she declared that she had taken what she deserved, feeling as though she was owed more than just obscurity from the world. After declaring that she had betrayed the clan's code, Yoshimitsu's sorrow shifted to resolve as he placed his hand on his blade. Jigo, jitoku. Drawing her daggers, she faced Yoshimitsu, who unsheathed the cursed blade. Yoshimitsu versus Kunimitsu. Ultimately, Yoshimitsu disarmed Kunimitsu, the cursed blade at her throat. He declared that she was no longer a member of the clan, stating she must leave and never return. Sarama. Tears of rage and regret in her eyes, Kunimitsu fled into the night, leaving behind her clan, her purpose, and her identity. Yoshimitsu stood alone, mourning the loss of what once was and what could never be restored. Haunted by her betrayal of the Manji clan, her heart weighed heavy with regret as memories of her time with the clan flooded back. The training, the missions, and the camaraderie. She had sacrificed it all seemingly for mere fleeting power and possessions. Through tears, she reflected on her descent into greed realizing she had not only betrayed her clan but herself, abandoning the principles that had once defined her. In a moment of deep remorse by a forest stream, Kunimitsu washed her face in the icy water, confronting her transformed reflection. From a committed warrior to a lost soul. Yet, a spark of stubborn determination ignited within her. Though she mourned the loss of her clan family, the memories of dark times still haunted her. The abuses she had suffered at the hands of those stronger than her forever etched into her mind, and the scarring on her face served as a constant reminder. It was a fate she had vowed never to endure again, no matter the cost, even if it meant betraying those closest to her, those who had taken her in and given her a new life. Setting off into the unknown, Kunimitsu was determined to forge her own destiny, free from the control of others. It was a path marked by the pain of her choices, but necessary to ensure she never found herself powerless again. She walked away, hopeful that one day, her former clan might grasp the reasons behind her actions, even if forgiveness was unattainable. Welcome to the King of Iron Fist Tournament. Yoshimitsu reflected on the shifting world around him. Technology and globalization transformed society, posing new threats and leaving the Manji clan grappling with their relevance amid rapid changes. He observed increasing restlessness among the younger clan members who questioned the applicability of ancient practices in the modern world. Even veteran warriors expressed doubts, suggesting it was time to adapt their methods to combat contemporary injustices. Despite these pressures, Yoshimitsu believed their time-honored traditions and code of honor were integral to the clan's identity. At the training grounds, he saw his warriors' intense dedication which highlighted the division between eager younger members and the more purposeful older warriors. This underscored the need to bridge traditional methods with modern demands. Resolved to lead his clan through this transition, Yoshimitsu recognized the importance of collective wisdom and support in navigating these changes. Yoshimitsu convened with his trusted advisors in the clan's council chamber facing the heavy task of adapting to a rapidly changing world. He 
he addressed the group, emphasizing the need for evolution while staying true to the Manji clan's core principles. He presented Dr. Bosconovich to the clan, a genius scientist previously held captive and forced to develop technologies for the KGB. Under the agreement that the Manji clan provide the doctor with protection, Dr. Bosconovich would work on technologies to aid the Manji clan in their mission. Спасибо, Йосимицу. Твой клан защищает меня. Я могу продолжать свою работу без перерыва. Великолепно. In the Manji clan's newly upgraded compound, warriors convened around a holographic cityscape. Kenji Mitsu, a young prodigy among them, eager to impress Yoshimitsu, outlined the pervasive influence of a corrupt corporation controlling the country, along with many branches and facilities around the world, the Mishima Zaibatsu. The challenge would be formidable, requiring more than traditional tactics. Under Yoshimitsu's leadership, the clan had integrated cybernetics and nanotechnology into their arsenal, enhancing their abilities. Kenji Mitsu, augmented with body implants, exemplified this hybrid approach, seamlessly interfacing with data and systems to strategize their next moves. The clan also preserved their mystical heritage, practicing meditation and invoking spiritual support to complement their technological enhancements. The strategy laid out before them focused on a covert operation to infiltrate the corporation, expose its wrongdoings and siphon its wealth, giving it to people who need it the most. The announcement of the King of Iron Fist tournament ignited excitement within the Manji clan. For Yoshimitsu, the event was not merely a competition, but a strategic opportunity to undermine the powerful corporation and put many other criminal syndicates plaguing society on notice. As the tournament approached, Yoshimitsu convened his top warriors, emphasizing the dual nature of their mission, to compete, but also to expose their enemies. The clan intensified their preparations, engaging in rigorous training sessions to refine their combat skills and endurance. They analyzed their potential adversary, studying the corporation and its vulnerabilities while collaborating with Dr. Bosconovich, who developed new gadgets to give them an edge. The plan was for Yoshimitsu to enter the tournament himself as a decoy. The clan would then pursue their mission behind the scenes. The atmosphere was charged as Yoshimitsu, in gleaming armor, entered the arena to the roar of the crowd, facing Ganryu, a determined sumo wrestler fighting to reclaim his honor. Ganryu's lifestyle outside of the ring was his downfall, as his arrogant attitude and illicit gambling habit led to him being dishonorably discharged from his sport. Still determined to prove himself to be the best fighter in the world, he entered the King of Iron Fist tournament to prove his strength. <laughs> Yoshimitsu versus Ganryu. The match's climax arrived with Yoshimitsu unleashing a flurry of precise sword slashes, ultimately penetrating Ganryu's defenses and toppling him, signaling Yoshimitsu's victory. The arena burst into applause as he was declared the winner. With his sword raised in triumph, he acknowledged the crowd. Though victorious, his thoughts drifted elsewhere to Kenjimitsu, who was chosen to lead the clan's main mission while Yoshimitsu provided the smokescreen. As Yoshimitsu captivated the crowd, the Manji clan conducted the covert operation, aiming to disrupt the corrupt corporation linked to the tournament. Kenjimitsu, acting as the lieutenant and skilled hacker, initiated the mission. The team had prepared by meticulously analyzing and infiltrating the tournament's security systems. 
During the next rounds, as the world's attention was fixed on the fights, Kenji Mitsu's team stealthily accessed the central control room, fortified with high-tech security. Utilizing advanced hacking tools and their cybernetic enhancements provided by Dr. Boskanovich, they began to extract critical data, financial records, security protocols, and personnel files. The operation was a delicate balance of stealth and urgency. Kenjimitsu monitored the tournament's progress, continuing to use Yoshimitsu's matches as a diversion to cover their infiltration. The team's expertise allowed them to penetrate deeper into the network, nearing their goal of securing valuable intelligence and finances. However, just as they approached their objective, an alarm sounded. Their presence was detected by the security system. Reacting swiftly, Kenjimitsu triggered the clan's fail-safe protocols, erasing their digital tracks and securing the stolen data. The team retreated just as security forces converged on the control room. Despite the close call, the mission was a success. The Manji clan had siphoned enough funds and information to strike a significant blow against their adversary. In the second round of the tournament, Yoshimitsu found himself face to face with Kazuya Mishima, the formidable heir to the Mishima Zaibatsu, known for his ruthless power and dark energy. Despite the overwhelming strength of his opponent, Yoshimitsu was resolute, drawing on his deep well of experience and the harmonious balance of body, mind, and spirit. <笑>周囲の世界が崩壊していく種あなたは自分の道徳を守り続けます他者のイメージで最高畜しますので聖人は必要ありませんヨシミツ<笑> As the fight intensified, Yoshimitsu realized Kazuya was tapping into a dangerous energy, escalating his strength to monstrous levels. Recognizing the imminent peril, Yoshimitsu understood he wouldn't win this battle. With a last act of defiance, he weaved intricate hand signs and suddenly vanished into the arena's shadows, declaring Kazuya the winner. Technically losing the match, Yoshimitsu's resolve was unbroken. Knowing the Manji clan's mission to disrupt the corrupt corporation was a success. Together, the clan journeyed back to the compound. Upon their return, Yoshimitsu convened a meeting to discuss the findings and implications. The members focused intently on the holographic displays, showing the extensive data extracted from the corporation's systems. This included financial records and secret communications that outlined a global conspiracy involving the Mishima Zaibatsu's plans for global expansion. The compound buzzed with activity. Warriors and technicians meticulously analyzed the data they had gathered. Amidst this, Yoshimitsu recognized a pressing need. The wealth acquired during their heist had to be distributed to those most in need. He prepared them to finish the mission by gathering his most trusted clan members. Surrounded by shadows as the night deepened, Yoshimitsu, standing tall among his warriors, reflected on the transformative journey they had embarked upon. As their leader, he felt a profound connection to each member, bound by their shared commitment to justice and the betterment of those less fortunate. The operation had been meticulously planned and was executed with precision. Under the cover of darkness, the clan distributed the wealth they had acquired, ensuring that the resources reached the hands of those in dire need. 
As dawn approached, Yoshimitsu watched the first light crease the horizon, his heart filled with quiet hope. The Manji clan had not only disrupted a corrupt power structure, but had also strengthened their resolve to fight for the oppressed. In the cool morning air, Yoshimitsu felt the weight of responsibility ease slightly, knowing they had ignited a small flame of change. In a display of their resilience and spirit, the Manji clan, shadows in the hidden corners of society, now stood as silent guardians of justice, their legacy forever solidified with the lives they had helped.